I'm completely blank in all my checks. Jonathan, um, for filling in um, for me, because um, that's to save us some time. Thanks, Jonathan. And um, I've seen a pre-copy of that excellent book, and it's really very exciting, so we do look at it when it comes out. Um, it's really a great contribution. It's a great contribution because um, there actually is so little ICT for DE literature available, especially some kind of consolidation of, of that kind. Um, so I've been, I was very pleased, although quite daunted, to come and speak to you today because I am not an ICT person in the technology sense. I'm not a computer scientist, I'm not a technologist. Um, and I'm not a development a theorist. In fact, I spent a lot of my life being an anti-development theorist. But pragmatism of being in government and working with policy and various things have compelled me to review it. And I think there is a lot of um, comfort, hope, and I certainly regard myself as part of efforts to reconstruct development and development theory, um, particularly in relation to ICT. Um, so I just sort of, I, I, I did think it was going to be more workshoppy and I think we'd scribble on some paper and stuff. But perhaps we can, somebody can just remember these and we can come back to them at the end. Um, but I just thought before we start with this, I, I, um, I think um, Salim and Bill, um, Hussain will, will tell you that I've been involved with some um, uh, evaluations of ICT for D at, at UCT. And I've been um, uh, sitting with um, Jonathan on the ICT for D meta review panels on and off for very, a few years now. Um, precisely in response to critiques I've had of the ICT for D, the big international um, ICT conference, um, which for me has just, for many years, completely lacked the D. I, I felt like I'm in an ICT conference. It doesn't connect with me and what I'm dealing with in terms of development and, and the policy at all. So, um, I, I, so I think this is a really interesting um, <coughs> um, opportunity to engage, particularly with the South African um, ICT for D um, community, who are, as Jonathan points out, so active and um, um, you know globally influential in this area. So, I thought perhaps we could just start by you telling me what you understand by development, because I'm assuming you've got the ICT side all sorted out. So, um, what do you, so um, what do you understand by development? Just what can you, when, I say, when you say I'm an ICT for D practitioner, what does that mean for you? What does the D mean for you? Yes. Utilising the transformational potential of IT to help people in socio or economic development. So, for me, it has an aspirational tinge. It's about transforming for the better, preferably you know, in terms of social justice. Okay. So, how else? so we've got transformation. We've got um, improvement of social and economic conditions. Um, you've got social justice. Okay, which is bringing in another walk in here. What else? Yeah. Um, capacity building and empowerment support decision making and informed action. Okay, okay. So very much um, sort of salient type things, capacity, um, human capacity, um, empowerment for people. Okay. What else? Yeah, um, reduction of inequity. Reduction so of inequality. Inequity or inequality. Okay. To give you a computer science answer, uh, yes. building new things. <laughs> <laughs> that can be very undeveloped. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just progress for the data. Progress. Okay. Certainly, that's the aspirational side of development. It's always been, you know, about transforming things for the better, making them for the better, improving them for the better. So, in all of these. Um, words, they're obviously they're heavily laden with values, with ideology, with all sorts of things. If you say um, we're using technology to um, reform the, the political situation by having you know, electoral, um, uh, digital elections or something like that, you're speaking a different language to saying 
Um, I want to use ICTs to empower um, entrepreneurs or informal sector to reach their suppliers. Or um, I want to use ICTs to transform um, societies in order to um, achieve or aspire to achieve uh, social justice. They, they're different, these things are saying different things. So perhaps if you could just, from working from that side, what, what, when, you, when, I say develop, when we say development, what literature are your kind of key, what authors are, the ref, are your kind of core references that you use? Okay, so everybody, everybody uses SEN. Okay, let's take the fabulous amount on one side. Okay, so there we're talking very much about capacity. Um, you know, um, capacity is freedom. So very much attached to freedom that you you don't you're not free until you have the capacity to um, act. Okay, so that's a key one, and it obviously is very critical, and we all love it. But there must be something else. Chambers. Chambers. Okay, so, so certainly in the computer, uh, um, computer human interaction sort of side of things, there's a whole lot of literature which I'm not familiar with, but perhaps people can spit that out anyway and we can try and see where that would fit in. Well, very specifically in ICT for D, people like Jeff Walsham and uh, Richard Heath's yeah. very potently on... And obviously worked and trained yeah. and researched in this area for a long period of time. Um, maybe I did say capacity building, and maybe that's something that Sen talks about so much, but I didn't say it because of Sen. I was thinking of what I see and I experience um, as someone that has been in the field and has interacted with people from those particular countries. Yeah. And that's why I came up with that. Capacity building. Okay. And, okay. So and I think, you know, the, the, the power of, of um, Amartya Sen's work is that you know, it resonates very much with what people are doing on the ground. So although you're speaking about purely capacity development, you're not talking about SEN. If you actually look at SEN, if you're looking at it in terms of, you know, development theory um, and the literature, you will see that it actually explains so many um, ICT failures, so many um, failures to, for, you know, to get positive policy outcomes because we've, in fact, not, we've failed to capacitate people. So if we look at the um, empirical evidence on, on ICTs, in terms of policy implementation and positive outcomes, our biggest challenge at the moment is human development. The technology is all there, we can fix it, all sorts of things, and even the money is there. We always get the money from somewhere. Our biggest challenge is these big intergenerational challenges now, human development, of actually giving people precisely to be able to participate in the, the wonderful world that Jonathan was speaking about in a more equitable way, in a more equal way. Okay, so, what I'm going to... I'm going to do, let me get back to it, um, is just run through some um, really history of development theory because I think um, in my engagement in, in many of these forums, um, there are certain assumptions about where we've come from and where we are today that I'm, I'm, I'm not sure we're all on the same page. So for some of you, this is going to be terribly 101 and can we just move along and try and see what the challenges are and the strategy issues are for us you know, in, in, in this century at least. Um, but in fact, what we've seen at the moment is, in fact, what I think is quite exciting, an unblocking of development theory and development practice. I think a lot of people for a long period of time um, have been so polarized within um, development uh, theory and practice that it's been very difficult to kind of forge a way ahead to um, um, nurture and build and um, you know, defend the truth claims of this emerging discipline. Even, you know, and, and the question even the question of evil can even be called that. So I, I want us to th talk and think about it. You know, is there a discipline for ICT for D? Or is it actually just a subsection of something else that we're all doing in the social sciences anyway? Which is how I've been doing ICT for D for you know, the last 20, 30 years. Um, but in fact, you know, I think there are very interesting challenges as um, ICTs have increasingly you know, underpinned global developments and therefore national developments as well. 
um, as they've been um, responsible for these changes, they seem to have a really fundamental and you know, um, particular position that might require um, a, the application of other social sciences in a, in a consolidated and in a, um, a, a integrated way. So, um, I, I want to speak a little bit on how this um, development policy and practice has become unlocked. And I'm going to talk about it more in terms of the theory and literature, and then come back to the ICT um, for D. But I think if we look at um, uh, ICT for D, and I've asked you now really what you um, uh, think development is, but perhaps just to very, very quickly, and we will come back to this at the end, to say if that is what you think development is, and I think broadly we've got a good idea of what development is, then what do you think the key research questions are? If we are a discipline, if we are a ICT for D center, or if we were an ICT for D conference, we must have a um, sort of, you know, either a, a grand theory that we fit into, or a, a, a framework, a research uh, set of questions that we are trying to address. Why are we in the ICT for D? Well, we want to do, solve this. So some of these have kind of come up, but. In thinking about specific research questions for ICT for D in relation to the issues we've spoken about, equality, progress, and um, capacity building, etc. What are for you, what is the, the core research question that your research is contributing to? I talk in things like sustainability, scalability, yeah. impact measurement. Yeah. So if you take sustainability, for some, okay, because I think again, you know, sustainable development is pretty indisputable as a good idea. I'm going to listen to, but anyway, you, you, I think we can take that. If we say sustainable development, what work are you doing? That is, what is the research question behind the work that you're researching that will contribute to sustainable development? So one thing, I think we talked a little bit about capacity building being, being really important, and, but that's been less about research and more about um, you know, these workshops and, and all the training. Um, but kind of related is, uh, I've been looking at like global content creation. So how do we, instead of always pushing content from upwards, down on high to the people that are in rural areas, how do we enable people to their own content and push it and create their own art of management, right? Um, yeah. So content creation. Okay. So <clears throat> what I'm what I'm sort of wanting us to keep on the back of our minds for this, and this is what's been concerning me with ICT for D, is there are these fabulous projects all going on in you know underserviced communities, in you know deep rural areas. Um, and people do this fabulous project and it's a fabulous project. And then what? How is it connecting to you know, sustainable development, to poverty, etc.? And I'll give you a very practical example. Um, um, I was recently, in fact, a year ago now, on one of these uh, GSMA panels um, where they were awarding prizes for um, innovation. They've got these fabulously sponsored labs, and they were um, uh, awarding prizes for the most in innovative model. And the prize that won, which was awarded by the head of the Indian regulator here in Cape Town at their big event, and she um, said she was terribly proud to um, give this award to the um, GS, some G, a group who was working with GSMA in India, who had produced a Android app that could be used um, by girls when, and this is quoted language, when they are unhygienic and have to stay at home, this would allow them to connect to the internet and they would be able to keep up with their classes. Okay. So this was their prize winning app. Okay. Awarded by the head of the regulatory. And everybody thought this was fabulous because it had actually allowed these poor, unfortunate girls who couldn't for various reasons practical and social attend school to receive this 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 app. Um, 
is, what do people think about that? Is it a, is it a, is it a, a great development? Well, that's fascinating, if you could argue. <laughs> <laughs> well, 